Guess what's coming to dinner? It's mammoth. Like the actual mammoth, like dino DNA, maybe in your stomach soon. There's this meatball. Can we bring up the meatball? Mm -hmm. I'm begging for you to bring up the meatball. Made with actual mammoth meat, the type of mammoth that went extinct 4,000 years ago. This is an Australian food startup that presented it at Nemo, a science museum in Amsterdam yesterday. No word yet on if they presented fish sticks made of Nemo. Um, no, for now, you're just going to have to eat the mammoth. And the only thing more mind blowing. Then the idea of being able to eat actual mammoth is how unappetizing the meatball actually looks. That looks like something that a mammoth would produce after eating mammoth rather than the actual meat itself. So it was somewhere between a softball and a volleyball, so even more appealing right there. It had been covered with a glaze so it wouldn't be damaged on its way uh, from Sydney to the actual star, uh, the event in Amsterdam. Although it looks like it's gonna survive the next asteroid hit, I think it'll be okay. And uh, what you need to know about this is that it was created through a process of what's being called cultured or cultivated meat, where they will in a lab. There's no actual animals, but they're producing actual animal cells. In this particular case, they used publicly available genetic information from the mammoth. Isn't that a HIPAA violation? Uh, filled missing parts with genetic data from its closest living relative, the African elephant, and inserted it into a, sh a sheep cell. Uh, then they put it in a lab, it multiplied, and they were eventually able to produce enough to create whatever the hell that is in that jar. JR, what do you think, and how many of them would you like on the <laughs> plate of spaghetti? Uh, I tell you what, man, we humans, we're some garbage creatures. So, you know, the majestic nature of ancient creatures was well, like several thousand years old last time a mammoth was around. Uh, the uh, the imagination, us imagining the recreation <laughs> of old ancient creatures. And the first thing we think of is, I wonder how woolly mammoth tastes. <laughs> Not the majestic nature of this huge creature that once roamed the earth. The same step I took right here in Minnesota is where a woolly mammoth stepped. Amazing, majestic, I should be, cons I should be like in, in awe. Instead, I'm like, ah. How soon can I get a piece of its meat in my mouth? I wonder if the T-Rex was tender or tough. Does it go well with A1 steak sauce? Maybe some ketchup. That's the first thing we think about. Uh, Chick-fil-A Chick to... sauce <laughs> works on everything. <laughs> what? How, how messed up are we? And let's create these ancient creatures for our consumption. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something very evocative about all of this. I already imagine like Ron DeSantis in caveman gear, uh, getting all excited about this particular meatball. Uh, no, there's just some, there's something about the dinosaur times that we find appealing and we wanna, like if they if they brought back like a brontosaurus, you don't think that people would wanna eat that? It, it is like <laughs> the first, you wanna see it and then you wanna put it in your mouth. That's true of almost everything in <sighs> nature, why shouldn't it be true? But no, there's just, it, it is a very captivating time. I mean, Jurassic Park is a classic for that reason. I'm a full grown adult and one of the stories I'm working on for my Patreon is actually about a sort of like dinosaur post apocalyptic world. Um, and this is a way that people could be like could experience it viscerally, almost literally viscerally <laughs> by chewing it. Now you can't actually get it. You're not gonna be able to go to Ralph's or HEB or whatever and buy a bunch of this meat. But they do say the CEO of Vow, the company that produced it, they say that they wanna get a, a new conversation going about the future of meat because you might think, well, this is like a lot of fake meats as we call them. No, this is different than other fake meats. This is not like a soy product or something like that. This is actual animal cells being cultivated, but not from actual animals. So some people see this, including these many, many startups that are working on this sort of thing as a way to cut the environmental impact of animal agriculture significantly. I think that probably needs remains to be seen. There's probably studies on it, but I imagine these labs are gonna produce emissions and all that. But that also if your concern is that animals would, being, would be being raised and would suffer during the process, which I think most people do, then this would potentially get around some of that. Although I have a feeling many animal rights people probably don't like this much more, uh, if at all. So I don't know, Jared, what do you make of any of those arguments? Think about, you know, say that, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, universe, alien life. They say it's not necessarily they're far away, they're in different times, right? Because of time space, right? Um, so imagine there's some future creatures who have gone back and taken some old human DNA and they're re- recreating our meat from our bodies because they may want to try tasting it again. It's like, oh man, there was this, uh, this existence of these humans. I wonder what they tasted like. This is like, <laughs> this is some weird stuff, isn't it? Like if you really think about it, this is really weird. And so it's it's that we're these creatures that do it. And thinking about ancient creatures that we may want to eat, it's outrageous. But yeah. uh, at the same time, they don't have to make it that big just because it's a mammoth meat ball. <laughs> Come on, bro. It reminds me. It reminds me of the time that Peggy Bundy made a bonbon, and it was like that big. And needlessly, <laughs> but you know the thing. Before we move on, the <clears> thing that I find most suspicious about this is the company keeps talking about the smell of the meat, about the way no. that it smells, and all of that. None of them are saying definitively whether they've eaten any of it. And I understand that producing that meatball probably cost like $20 million or something. <laughs> but like, you don't think that anyone took a bite? Cuz they're not they said, saying one way or the other, which makes, I said start, start to speculate. I did anyway. see, I thought they said they hadn't tried it and don't try it. This is like a, there is no it's like a prototype. They haven't eaten it. <laughs> <laughs> they At least like someone, went, someone was like, oh, maybe. Ugh. Ugh. a little bit of sauce. Who looks at a mammoth and is like, <laughs> I want that. And by the way, also, you know, I have to take issue with the Flintstones because every time they presented mammoth meat, it was like a delicious looking thing of ribs that were all big. It wasn't this amorphous meat blob. Ugh. What I can't wait Make for those ribs. What I can't wait for, John, is the debate between Ron DeSantis and uh, and uh, Donald Trump. Remember, it was between him and Marco Rubio, and they were talking about their. I guess girth. Um, So I guess since Ron DeSantis has got Tiny D and Meatball Ron as his nickname so far, I can see how mammoth meatballs just might come in. Maybe Ron DeSantis will run an ad and be like, yeah, they call me Meatball Ron. And you see, (laughs) (laughs) that's the size of my meatballs. (laughs) Please no. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.